Okay, so let's say that you're a product manager and you have a set of total features that could be included in an MVP or a minimum viable product. So you're a startup and you're searching for the MVP with the smallest feature set for which users will pay for. So when you're deciding on which features to add, you need to be deliberate. You can't add all of them. So one way that I think a lot of people would try to solve this is by getting an importance rating for each feature. So if we move to the other screen, you can see that I have a Likert scale one to seven rating from not important to very important for each feature. And what is the most important to include in product X, our MVP? And as you can see, most people, because they want to appear positive or they have some scale use bias, or they just want all of the features, will select a five, six, or seven for all of the features. So on the back end of our analysis, it's going to be, it's, it is going to be difficult for us to determine which feature is most important because maybe all of the features are like 85% top two box rating. And this doesn't help us as a product manager because we want to determine which are the most important features for which people will pay for. So max diff is a, is a method that you can use to change it up. It changes the question type. And instead of an importance rating for each feature, we require the respondent now to make trade-off decisions between features. So I just want to show quickly an example of what a max diff, feature, uh, max diff question looks like. Remember that we have four features and I take a subset of those four features. So I'm only showing three features per question. And this is an example of one max diff question. And here the respondent would select which is most important to him or her and then which is least important to him or her. So they make two selections per question. And then there are gonna be a series of these questions which rotate the, uh, the, the feature subsets so we hit all of the different permutations of our total feature list. So, and, and I would say that is, uh, you know, the, the culmination of these max diff questions is a max diff experiment. One of the most complicated and difficult aspects of max diff is getting a valid experimental design. If you think about it, we're taking a subset of total features and we are, and then we're showing uh, multiple questions to to show the respondent all the different combinations of feature subsets. This can be difficult to think up on your own or even calculate using software. And that's where software like Sawtooth comes in handy. It's a specialty software for choice-based experiments and surveys. And I think what you do on this software is you, you upload your total attribute list and then it just creates the survey questions in a valid experimental design. So if you do get more into these experiments, then I suggest you look into something like that. We can handle it here because we're only looking at four features, but that's just a note uh, for if you want to actually start implementing this on your own. One of the most difficult parts about max diff is the fact that we need to get a valid experimental design in order for us to have a valid max diff experiment. If you think about it, we're taking subsets of features from the total feature list, and we're showing multiple questions and cycling through the different combinations of feature subsets. So you, you really have to think rigorously about this, and you know you have to be careful not to overweight certain features, for instance. Like, it wouldn't be valid if you showed feature A five times and the respondent only sees feature B three times. That would be overweighting feature A. So um, in order to get this valid, this sort of validity, we need something called a balanced incomplete block design. And I don't want to crawl through the weeds with you guys. There are different criteria for it that I've listed here, um, but uh, suffice it to say that it is probably the most important setup step for you. This is where something like Sawtooth software comes in handy, which is a specialty software for choice-based experiments like max diff and conjoint analysis. And I'm pretty sure what you do is you, you upload your full feature list and then it just automatically creates the survey questions for you uh, and that are adhering to these BIBD principles. So um, that's something to look into, especially if you go 
with more than four uh, total attributes, which I'm sure you'll want to do. It gets a lot more complicated to do manually in R. So here's an example of what our max diff questions look like. Here's an introduction and instructions to the respondent. And then we have four max diff questions in a series here. And if you see it, we, so remember we have four total features, but we're only showing three features per question. And we rotate the features in BIBD fashion to show the respondent the correct com combinations of these features. This is what the raw data looks like. Up here, the variables stands for question one, position one, like wh whichever features in position one, question one, position two, question one, position three. So for example, the uh, you know respondent in row five here on question one says that feature A, which was in position one, is most important, and feature C, which was in position two, is least important. And since you're only making two selections per question, the third position has no answer, it's blank. And this is fine, R can handle this fine. There are several ways that you can handle the analysis for max diff data. I'm gonna show you two. There's a count-based approach, which is simple, but somewhat flawed. However, it gives you a good estimation uh, and then there's a more advanced method using a statistical model called a multi -lo multinomial logit model. So starting with the count analysis, what I do is I count the number of times, the total number of times that feature A was chosen as most important and the number of times that it was chosen as least important. And then I subtract best from worst and I get the count, which is negative 54 in the case of feature A. So we can just look at this count column and then we can rank the features based on this. This is giving relative importance. And again, this is count based. It's, it's flawed and it's, it's an approximation, but it is handy for really quick analysis of max diff data. So here we have feature B is best, then D, then A, then C. If you just rank order those counts. Here's another analysis uh, for the count based approach. This is the percent of respondents who prefer the different features. So here, 74% of respondents prefer feature B, 12% prefer feature A, and again, if we just rank order these, we'll, we'll get the same result as seen above. So the second analytical method is gonna be uh, utility estimation using aggregate multinomial logit model. This is more accurate than count-based, but uh, more difficult to interpret. So maybe if you have a more educated audience in statistics, then you can move to this multinomial logit. If you don't, then I think the count-based approach is pretty good for most purposes. First, we have to get our data into stacked layout format. And this link right here is a really good example uh, of how to do that. So this is what the stacked layout format looks like. And then I call the mlogit function on our choice, which is what they are choosing for um, best and worst. And predictors are B, C, and D, and I'm setting feature A to zero. It is our reference and it is set equal to zero. And this gives you an output similar to a logistic regression. Technically it is a logistic regression, and each predictor variable has a coefficient, and remember that a has a uh, was set equal to zero. So again, this gives and these are the raw utilities, these coefficients. So again, this gives that it goes B A D C in terms of relative feature importance. Also, we can calculate the probability that a respondent selects a feature as most important given a, uh, you know, amongst a group of other features. So let's, so the, this equation right here, if we show a respondent feature A, C, and D, then we get here that it's, they are 67% likely, or, you know, it's a 67% probability of them selecting feature A as most important. And now I want to transform the raw utilities to a zero one, to 100 scale. So this, this is transforming raw utilities, which are interval scale to something called a ratio scale. 
And with ratio scales, we can directly compare the, the numbers to each other. For instance, so A is 21 and B is 100 in this zero to 100 scale. And B is so dominant. We already have seen that above. So B is so dominant, so it makes sense that it's 100. Um, but uh, so 20 is one fifth of 100. So we can say that feature B is about five times more important to users than feature A. There are more advanced and other statistical models that you can use. Something called a latent class multinomial logit allows you to segment the data based on raw utility scores. And then a hierarchical Bayesian multinomial logit model gives raw utility scores at the respondent level. So you can then compare utilities based on that. And you, then you could group, you, you can create kind of a priori groups of respondents and, and then aggregate those utilities and then you could compare them for statistical significance using something like a t-test thanks for watching hopefully you take on this analysis for yourself and i'd like to help you with it i'm going to post a link to my r code in the the youtube description and uh you know so i hope you take on this analysis for yourself the way that i did this was manually using r and qualtrics and again, as stated before, there are more specialty softwares out there like um, Sawtooth, which I think that you, you give it an overall or, you know, your total feature list, and then it automatically creates the questions for you. In this case, I had to figure out the BIBD design and then manually program those survey questions into Qualtrics and then remember to randomize them and then randomize the positions of the features within each MaxDiff question. So... There's a lot to forget in there, and it just gets much more complicated if you go beyond four total features, which I'm sure you guys are going to want to do. So if you really get into this kind of analysis, then you're probably going to want a specialty software like Sawtooth for choice-based modeling. Um, but, you know, I just took this on as an educational opportunity for myself and, uh, and, and to learn what's going on in the background uh, by manually coding it in R. Thanks.